and then uh, let's uh, carry on discussion discussing mm -hmm. and uh, and I will later upload it to our private account uh, that mm -hmm. means uh, drive okay so uh, characters jewel yes. nolly scribe and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I was stopped at discussing or well giving my my take on on jewels matters on, on privacy and human interactions mm -hmm. so definitely limiting human interactions uh, and uh, and when it came to Lenny's then my take is that uh, yes they shared a human moment together and yes uh, Joel kind of felt genuinely sorry for him but uh, that's that's not why she treated him okay it's more like no. she she needed to dig out information from uh, from an obvious crackpot and uh, and she used she deliberately used her skills to to fish out some of that uh, information so it's like mm -hmm. basically she used her business skills to uh, uh, to get information out of him, so it's it's almost like uh, instead of uh, real human emotions, uh, she has her trade house training kicking in. It's like mm -hmm. she is using the business etiquette. Uh, it's 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 like somebody somebody who. Uh, has a very good uh, business etiquette training and is able to use those skills even though they don't uh, really uh, feel genuinely connected to anybody mm -hmm. and one thing that I wanted to uh, mention when the connection started going off uh, remember when uh, when uh, Sika was almost uh, edited and we gave copies to read to others and and Kiyori was like wait why isn't she reacting uh, more warmly or why, why why doesn't she provide a warm reaction when when she meets her long lost mom like she's just sitting and staring and it's like exactly <laughs> 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 so so that's our jewel da, 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 da. Ah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so in, in that instance there is of course other layers it's like uh, neither of them or like from jewel's point of view this is a this is a stranger like they they do mm -hmm. not have she is not meeting uh, <laughs> a long lost loved one she is only establishing uh the first she's taking first steps in interacting with a stranger Mm -hmm. uh, with fortune I think there was a certain solidarity building up so like uh, when they were uh, when they were traveling together and when they were going through the port together and all that so she did actually warm up a little bit and of course uh, there was the fact that fortune uh, is a little bit of easygoing or like fortune met her halfway so it was i would i would think that once once he sort of decided that uh, that she's all right uh, uh, he helped the interactions on his part mm -hmm. I, I was going to say that on top of that jewel, well, you sort of covered it because, like you said, when she interacts with Lenis, it is literally just to get information. I was going to say she's very sort of objective-driven mm -hmm. and task-driven, and that might that's partially, I think, because of her upbringing and, and mm -hmm. you know, the Seekers are awesome, um, and then she gets there, finds out that isn't the case, and just puts her mind to working even harder then I think mm -hmm. um, 
So she's very objective driven and she understands what she has to do in certain occasions to get information. Um, whether that be emotional, extra additional emotional output or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I think she understands that. <laughs> I just, I just think that I think the point I was trying to make was she's very, she's extremely objective driven, mm -hmm. um, and that that definitely shows. Like she, well, she, I don't think there was there, she would have given up on Fortune, uh, but as soon as she there's an opportunity to go after Wraith, she one hundred percent takes it. Um, so. uh... No. I, I think uh, I think this is t very different things here. Okay. It's like as soon as there's a possibility to go after raid, what does this have to do with anything? Or like how how is this uh, objective oriented? Well, she she knows that raid's got fortune, right? <coughs> ah, okay, yeah. So it's it's like okay. I don't know. I know we're just we're just shooting the shit at the minute. Yeah, yeah. So, so you mean that? Uh, you mean the point that I I I still haven't completed the job, and therefore I have I have to, uh, I have to put all effort into going after them. Mhm. Mm there's there's that, and then I also think there's potential. But like you said, there's a um. Uh, what's the word? They're sort of getting to. They're warming up to each other, right? Mm. As well, Jewel and Fortune. So I think she's starting to feel a bit of loyalty towards him as well, possibly. Mm. Loyalty might be the wrong word. Kinship. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yeah, it's e even a yeah, one. E even so, like I, I would say that the the sort of warming up is is still in very early stages in them so it's like they mm -hmm. are going through the motions and they are they they are trying and and they are sort of genu genuinely uh, uh, genuinely interested in being kind to each other uh, mm -hmm. but they they aren't so much uh clicking by default just yet. Yeah, no. I was working on split personality one notes last night and I was thinking <laughs> about Fallon Turn's character arc. Right, and his whole goal is that he wants to retire mm. and uh, actually he actually manages to achieve this in Split Personality 2 at the end of SP2, which is quite nice. <laughs> actually, it, it it improved his character a lot. Um, so I'm just... I'm trying to... I think maybe I'm trying to apply the same thing to these other characters as well to try mm -hmm. and work out what their goals mm -hmm. are and what they want in life, essentially. Um, it's... Uh, there's this... It's difficult, uh, though. Yeah, I think that it was it's one of these uh, screenwriting principles is that what your character wants to achieve uh, is with them in their every scene and every interaction and something that they fear or something that uh, they avoid is holding them back in every scene and every interaction. Hmm. Fallon's massively afraid of reclaimers. <laughs> uh, there's some issues there. And oh, actually, as the as the story goes on, Luna and Rogue actually show him that reclaimers aren't all bad, you know. <laughs> so he develops a little bit more in that regard as well, which is cool. And he has to overcome that fear. Uh, and, and actually go and deal with some reclaimers at one point and it's a friendly interaction and that sort of gives him more hmm. balls for thought which is I like I like it it's a cool interaction <laughs> so how can oh what does what does what does gnarly want in life I 
I'm a, I think Gnarly just wants a, a... Oh, no, because if I say he wants a peaceful life, then his, it sort of conflicts a bit with his curiosity. Although he doesn't know that being curious about the data is going to lead to all sorts of trouble. Uh, so, actually, uh, since... Um I'm, I'm thinking since this trigger, uh, what actually drives him to take the data to somebody, we haven't actually uh, come up with a good reason yet. So it could be that it is not about curiosity. Like uh, if, if there is a strong motivation otherwise, then uh, then uh, it, it, is, it, is this like the things you were saying about how like potentially his salvage station is under threat and things like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like it's uh, it it is yeah. not it is. Uh, I would say that in the long run, it is not a very strong writing because it's uh, uh, like. When in doubt, uh, throw in a threat to the home world. Uh, it's gonna get old pretty fast unless there's a really good reason for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, using it as a placeholder, so it's like yes, a threat to something he values uh, could make him interested enough to uh, to inquire further. But on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, there there could be this uh, like. Uh, a one person can have contradictory drives. So on one hand, he wants to be in peace, but on the other hand, he likes to study things. Maybe I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't know Nolly that well, but I do have. Uh, I Neither do, do I. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. No wonder that uh, the story uh, failed to engage the reader. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew him, Aww. but. Uh, in in recent years as writing skills have developed and things like that it's like well really we've done a short story about him and a couple of deja vu storylines right mm -hmm. the, the deja vu storylines is with when he's at the Alicia group and that doesn't apply anymore so um like he's he in the in the forum I think he's the he's one of the driving force he's part of the tech crew at Alicia mm. right with Nux and Corey and he helps uh, them with the void cloud mm -hmm. research, um, but that doesn't happen anymore. Uh, um, well, uh, regarding character motivations, uh, it is of no consequence whether this actually happens. What is of consequence is uh, how well you have gotten to know the character while writing this. However, mm. <laughs> as much as I, I remember from reading those those things in the forum, I uh, I don't think he actually had any strong motivations anywhere. He was just kind of there. Mhm. Mm so, and he, I think he ha he hung out on Tahu ship an awful lot of the time as well. Yeah. So just it was. Uh, he was a background character yeah. just trying to get the power drive working I think. yeah so it felt more like you were trying to have a different voice or a different character in but you weren't actually doing much with him mm. uh, one point about him though is that he he does have a little bit of reclaimer reclaimer juice in him yes and uh, and uh, even though he doesn't know how to use it, or is he is he even aware? Oh, he he knows. Okay. Uh, he personally, okay, this might be a thing. He has a good relationship with his parents, his mother especially, was mm. something that I always thought. Um, it he's okay. And the other day, I was like, but why? So why is his ship called Theory? And I was like, maybe it's something is. His mum always used to say, like, oh, it should work in theory, you know, sorry, mm. he's named it after, like, a little catchphrase his mum used to say. Um, and which of his parents is a reclaimer? I think it's the mum. Okay. I think it's the mum. This is stuff that I haven't fleshed out by. Okay. I think it's the mum. So, for, uh, let me bounce some ideas by you. So, let's say, uh, 
Nolly has good relations with his parents, mm -hmm. uh, a regular human and the reclaimer, which is a union that might be frowned upon in the quote unquote uh, highly civilized worlds, but which which might be uh, a very very okay uh, combination in these more in these peripheral areas. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and so he is aware that he has some sort of uh, some sort of reclaimer legacy, but maybe he he isn't at the moment he he isn't even trying to do anything with it. He's just sort of aware of it. Also, it could mm -hmm. be that that his mom is not like uh, pure blood or a or hundred percent reclaimer but a hybrid herself which means that the uh, uh, any powers that uh, that there might be might be point a non-activated and point b uh, very weak mm -hmm. uh, yeah i think we've i think that's something i've always had with gnarly is that he has while he has got this uh sort of reclaimer legacy as you so nicely put it that was awesome mm -hmm. um he isn't too concerned with yeah, it right yeah. he doesn't really care too much about that whole side of things it might i think there was going to be a storyline in that tahu story that i think traveler that we were working on mm -hmm. where he was going to be in a high stress situation and something was going to happen mm -hmm. but i don't think he was going to have any control over it or, or that sort of thing it just happened mm. um but it probably scares him when it does and he probably doesn't want to do it again mm. too much uh just the thought so what what if uh, the reclaimer juice in him gives him the ability for extra focus and and uh, sort of uh, uh, super quick rea uh, super quick thinking and reaction time, as in when he's really uh, immersed in. I I'm going to describe a hyper focus. Uh, with mm -hmm. uh, with with some extra like extra helping of hyper focus essentially, so it's like when he uh, when he really when he's really immersed in a task, he's a he's actually able to uh, think faster than a regular human would. That's, that's uh, awesome. And and uh, and there might be some some sort of uh, uh, time distortion that he. Uh, that he experiences because of that, and that would be a very, very scary experience. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, it's like you blanked out for a second. What do you mean for a second? I was like, uh, I was making long calculations in my mind and that sort of thing. <laughs> so, so uh, once, uh, uh, once quote unquote activated, he might be, he might be learned to use this deliberately. But until then. It's just something that happens to him occasionally. Mm. Yeah, I like this. This fits well with uh, with him. Mm -hmm. And and this could work well with his sort of tinkering and uh, and and uh, and junk. Okay, now I'm getting maybe a little too far in, into Smith territory. But okay, he's he's uh, techy or sort of uh, uh, tech guy nature. Mm -hmm. so yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, so being very technologically oriented, doing repairs, doing uh, tweaks, building stuff, and then he's able to uh, calculate and blueprint something in his mind faster than somebody else would. Huh? That that's actually a pretty good starting point. Yeah, man. Um. You asked earlier. Oh, I don't know if you asked, but there was mention of. Uh, oh shit! Uh, outward displays of Nali's reclaimerness, right? Mm -hmm. So does he have any sort of like indication externally that he's a reclaimer? And previously, uh, and we can develop this. 
uh, or get rid of it. I've always thought that he's had some some markings, but they're not. They're very um, dull. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're not as at all like you would find on like say Luna or Rogue, for mm -hmm. example. They're very faded. They're very um, not as erratic as you would find, and they're not as widespread as you mm -hmm. would usually find. So I think. So it's like when uh, when he visits uh, the quote unquote uh, cozy human worlds, uh, hypothetically, then he could mm. just. Uh, Say, oh, it's a birthmark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So basically, uh, he he knew that it could be a, that could lead to a few problems. Like there could be a couple of people in the know, mm -hmm. and they cause they cause a bit of trouble for him. So there's uh, a potential yeah. conflict there La as well. Later down the line, like this ain't no birthmark, boy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, she. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I also have a thought on Scribe. Wee! Let's do this. Wee! Yeah, I, 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 I might upload this, uh, this uh, episode yet. I'm just gonna have to put some pictures instead of uh, the screen, blank uh -huh. screen. Uh, so the thought on Scribe is that while we don't know much about his personality and character just yet we can lean on his professional skills so it's like he is highly proficient in uh, in the data management so it's like um, he would be uh, he would be very comfortable in his scribe suit so to speak uh, he, mm -hmm. can, uh, he can he uh, can uh, he can interface with uh, with his technology very well, and uh, and uh, he would be rather talented in in this whole uh, memorizing po uh, part of the mm -hmm. of the scribe skill skill set. Do uh, we think yeah. he's better than average with that? Like, is he a standout? Uh, I I wouldn't I wouldn't say he is a standout in general, like uh, among other scribes. I would think that he is just about average, but he mm -hmm. could be a standout in uh, in some given area. Uh, and at the same time, being a standout in this given area would make his work more difficult. So it's like. Uh, again, it could be that he notices too much of some things, or or like uh, he. Uh, it, it's like um, he, uh, as to to summarize, I would say like he he's asking too many questions, but uh, within the scribe skill set, this would mean that when you're just. Uh, when you're tasked with uh, memorizing something or transferring data, he picks up on on its contents, and his mind sort of uh, homes in on certain details and starts uh, and starts inquiring. So it's like mm. uh, maybe he's a little bit too analytical for his own good. So it's like uh, uh, going by the Johnny Mnemonic trope you're supposed to carry the data you're not supposed to think about it mm -hmm. but uh, occasionally it could be that uh, uh, he can't help but think about it so in his case uh, I would say a certain curiosity or not being able to leave the infor information alone is something that actually does drive him Ooh, hello to my hi. new document. Yeah, yeah, hi. Hi. I was like, I was like, oh, I really hope this recording goes through. But if not, maybe mm -hmm. there should be a thing somewhere. Uh, and then Indeed. I got here, and it's like, oh, maybe I should have been typing this stuff down. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you can, you can do this now. 
So let's let's start from the scribe. Okay. So scribe. Uh, sometimes he gets quote unquote too interested in the data. Uh, he notices details and questions uh, and questions the details which makes uh, data delivery more difficult for him. And uh, in parentheses add keyword Ooh. Johnny Mnemonic. I don't know. Is that Johnny uh, M N? <laughs> you're 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 thinking like an engineer. Let me. Okay. Johnny New Mnemonic would also be a good. <laughs> 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 Keep it in. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> okay. we can use it somewhere. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, then Nolly. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, okay. Uh, scribe is very uh, is uh, very good at one aspect of his job, but it makes uh, things difficult. Uh, okay, and add to that. Mm -hmm. His analytical and questioning skills may... Let me change this. There you go. Yeah, his analytical and questioning skills uh, make his data transport skills more difficult to use. Yep. How? Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty oh. good. Okay. Uh, so Nolly. Yes, Nolly. Uh, Nolly is good with technology. Uh, uh, and also, he re he recognizes and understands what a lot of it does. Like mm -hmm. he can. He, yeah. Don, I'm gonna write that down. Uh, Analyzes and understands the tech he finds. So a new thought about him is that he is able to recognize more valuable uh, technology fr through the scrap or in the scrap. So he doesn't he doesn't just uh, collect all scrap. He's able to pick out more valuable scrap and put it in context. And now add quotes to the put it in context. So it's like if he were to, and don't type this, but uh, just uh, just a tangent. If he were mm -hmm. to uh, visit uh, the scrap station or wh wherever his temporary home is, uh, uh, if he would uh, if he would visit the station after a successful uh, uh, junk run, he would. He would be like going from uh, from shop to shop and like, oh, old Joe, I remember you. You needed a dampener coil for your refrigeration unit. Uh, <laughs> I happened to find one. So that that sort of thing. He uh, he is able to remember who needed what. And for him, this sort of. Uh, technology distribution or, or, or little gifts of technology are his way or are, are his social skill. Hmm. So in a way, aha uh -huh. oh this is good. So in a way out of out of these three, uh, Nali would be the most socially adept. <laughs> in I'm gonna make a note. Of yes, that. yes. So hmm. do do take the note. So out of, out of these three characters, Nolly is the most socially adept, uh, and he is able to 
uh, notice what people need or he's, he's able to notice the needs of others. Uh, okay, it's a perception thing, not a memory thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so yeah, this is uh, perception and empathy. So he, he has the highest empathy score <laughs> among these, uh, among these spellers. And fellerets. <laughs> uh, let's just say MCs. Um, mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 da. And and let's also add a note about his uh, his reclaimer heritage. Uh, he is aware of his uh, mixed reclaimer heritage, and he is not ashamed of it. Uh, it works, this works out fine for him in the backworlds, but might uh, cause problems uh, at certain locations. Uh, his reclaimerness, so his, his reclaimer slash uh, biohacker. Uh, abilities are tiny, but he has an extra helping of hyper focus. Uh, and add in parentheses that can lose track of time or like uh, can experience long time within a moment. Yeah. Mm hmm. Super, super in the zone. Yeah. Now, Jewel. Oh, God, not her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jewel. Uh, and in addition to. Uh, it's like may maybe, maybe add in brackets, like we know more about her. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, a jewel, and uh, we we know more. But there is this one thing that I would like to highlight. Uh, one thing to highlight is that she is able to use her business etiquette and street oh. etiquette training uh, <laughs> there you go uh, yeah uh, training uh, to get through human interactions so uh, uh, to summarize uh, uses etiquette to compensate for empathy Lots of issues. <laughs> and uh, I would say that the friendliness uh, we can't even make uh, we can't even make the claim that she is not friendly because uh, because her social aptness is so severely damaged that uh, we can't even assess her on the friendliness scale. So basically her, her upbringing has done a lot of damage to her ability uh, to, in, uh, to relate with people.
But on the other hand, uh, this also serves as a defense defense mechanism, so she uh, she can handle losses very well. Defense is with a C in English. Maybe, Sorry, maybe, that's maybe, a personal thing. Maybe Google. <laughs> Google be American. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's that. I'm not fast. Um, her organic is not allowed to show that it's right to other people. This also serves as a defense mechanism. She can handle losses very well. Um, uh, business something something, Harper House something something. Mm hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, in uh, in terms of Harper House, uh, now that she has been put into the position of a house household leader, uh, she this is a nightmare situation for her because she has to handle people. She has to make decisions on behalf of others. She has to manage various interests. Uh, everything that uh, that highlights her weakness in in that area. I had I, I said she had to manage various interests and expectations, uh, mm -hmm. which is another additional thing that she is not very good at. Yeah, so it's like if uh, uh, and don't write this down. This is a tangent. Uh, mm -hmm. If two people, let's say you, uh, let let's say two uh, employees. With, uh, with differing interests or with, with two employees in conflict would come to her seeking justice and it's like one has one uh, set of expectations and interests and the other has different ones and she was like eh, so what? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> or like uh, uh, in, in a situation where Maxis would have been able to work out a solution of uh, most mutual benefit she is clueless uh -huh. so even even though she knows how to uh, how to utter the right words and emulate certain interactions uh, she doesn't actually uh, she doesn't actually you know feel it mm -hmm. she doesn't feel the people <laughs> How can I make a note of that? Obviously, with an exclamation mark. Yep, obviously. <laughs> mm -hmm. How come? Because. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. <laughs> Sorry, I was inhaling. <laughs> um. <laughs> That's just, I, I'm I'm so glad that you're enjoying that. That's really cool. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's like uh, when you watch one of those, it's like eh, okay, but it's uh, the the sort of uh, uh, the memes and the the true essence of it kicks in when you watch many in a row. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yes. Barely easy. Uh, ba oh, what's, what's the? Yeah. Oh, it's easy. super easy. Barely, barely an inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> you can get that on a T-shirt. Uh, good relations with his parent. Mother is uh, half. Uh, so she's is hybrid. That's such a weird way of saying that. Um, father is human. Uh, Father is this. regular, quote unquote. Okay, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, hold on, 
buttons on the keyboard are far too close together. That feels irregular! <laughs> and I would think that uh, the place of his upbringing is, uh, is a place where he has encountered and accepted uh, people of many different backgrounds. So either some sort of uh, trading hub maybe a space station uh, or or a smaller moon with a sort of tight-knit community that sees many traveling folks but also has this uh, very uh, very varied gallery of different uh, different backgrounds for people keyword bazaar bazaar of cultures That's not the right bazaar. Bizarre. No. Uh, B A Z Z A A R. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Cultures. The <laughs> And uh, uh, did we already write this down? That knowledge way of socializing with people is to recognize their technological needs and then just sort of finding the right do that for them Techni technological needs and it's like Oh, does this robot arm of you need some new servos? Mm. That that sort of thing. Etc. Etc. Mhm. Mm yes. Etc. 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 Okay. So I think. <laughs> I think Jewel and Gnarly are okay. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Scribe and I'm a bit nervous. Uh, I think uh, with Scribe we can initially leave it at that because if we uh, if we sort of uh, lean on his professional skills at the moment. Okay. Mm, and also lean on the fact that he is a little bit too curious for his own good. Mm -hmm. And then we can discover more of him on the go. Because, nice. like, it could be that initially uh, he, uh, just like Jewel, uh, uses the business etiquette as a crutch in interaction, uh, Scribe could simply try to go into full pro mode and avoid other interactions at first. And uh, he's. Uh, uh, his deeper motivations and deeper character only comes out uh, later on or, or later down the line. Mm hmm. Okay, that's cool. I can go with the sort of uh, that sort of approach with mm -hmm. Scribe. It worked extremely well with uh, Lisa and Ra uh, with uh, Casca and Rafa. Mm. So, um, and this again. and this would actually uh, give us a potential uh, first touching point between uh, Nali and Scribe is that uh, Scribe is curious about a piece of information and meanwhile Nali notices something in his uh, technological outfit that uh, uh, that needs fixing or needs needs a spare part. So, for example, uh, Scribe received some uh, rough treatment in uh, during his mission. Uh, so he was on one hand he was subjected to his to the uh, neural feedback from his drones when uh, sixteen bit into one of them, <laughs> but also. Uh, the doctor uh, 
blasted uh, the environment with uh, super loud signals and uh, and static noises and whatnot. So it could be that he he has a little uh, he has a bit of a twitch in his uh, uh, in his scribe suit uh, when uh, when he gets back. And mm -hmm. uh, and Nali notices something about it. It's like uh, he could notice that he has some uh, that he has some empty drone docks on his sleeve. It's like, oh, don't you usually have? Uh, should shouldn't these be filled with uh, with little buggers? Yeah, usually I lost them. Oh, is that when uh, is that when your suit uh, developed the feedback twitch or some something of that sort? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, uh, I'm just going to make a note here. Mm -hmm. Gnarly is uh, super perceptive. Uh, notices Scribe's suit has issues. Uh, after the rough mission. Drones. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, after the rough mission. So we're talking about missing drones, uh, twitches, uh... Uh, have you got any more examples? Fl I'm gonna say a flickering light. No, no, not flick not no. I wouldn't say no. flickering lights. Definitely not. Uh, <laughs> Too more, more like, uh, more like the, uh, he, his neural feedback and the suit functions are seem to be out of sync a little bit. And it is something that he himself might not even be aware of yet. But uh, but to a trained technician or like a super keen technician, it is obvious that this dude here uh, has missed his maintenance. Uh, I learned how to spell this this morning. <gasps> yeah, you fucking did. Learned it. Yeah, mate. Uh, right. And I think this uh, this interaction is way better than the whole. Oh, uh, am I in some sort of trouble? Mm-hmm. Uh, although there there might still be still be room for yeah possibly. yeah uh, whether it's a genuine reaction or maybe a playful uh, oh <laughs> am I in some sort of trouble mm -hmm. so yeah we we still have to figure figure out uh, uh, how exactly Nali fits into the whole. Uh, scribe scenery but yeah I think in this particular case uh, he's gonna notice something where where he can help and this also gives me a further idea uh, mm -hmm. so when uh, when Nali is back at the quote-unquote junk station I'm just gonna call it that <laughs> so in, in back in back at the junk station uh, when Nali is trading in the stuff and uh, and providing uh, helpful parts for others, uh, he could be in interaction with the quote-unquote bookshop uh, person, and the bookshop person could even notice that. Uh, you seem to be more absent-minded than usual. You haven't even offered to. Uh, update my such and such, and Nali, and, and then Nali reluctantly, uh, uh, reluctantly admits that yeah, there is something that he saw that gave him pause, and now he's wondering like if he should do something about it, and uh, essentially, he is reluctantly going to ask for help mm -hmm. yeah, I just 
just made a, I made a note of that in the character notes, but I think mm -hmm. that probably gets you gets moved to somewhere else. Yeah, I think uh, we can move this one uh, into the uh, fluffy notes later on. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, some of the character notes can uh, can uh, be just copied into more than one place. But yeah, let's take notes in one place right now and then move them around as needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think this is as much as I have for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, when it comes to Scribe, he is a little bit more uh, closed down, including closed down to us, but we know of his professional skills. Mm -hmm. Same with Jewel, except with her, we also know what's behind those professional skills. Ah, uh, when it comes to Jewel, scroll down. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a few more aspects that, uh, that we can dabble into a little bit. So Jewel and quote unquote friendly people. For example, Jewel and Raptor. What do uh, what can we what can we say there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh ooh. I there there's the mentor student relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And Raptor kinda comes off as a bit of a Kind of not a, not a, not a know it all, but in the early stages of the book, where he's like, "Oh, private contracts are nothing but trouble." Um, there's an element of sort of fun poking, mentor student poking and prodding there. I think. Um, there's th also, uh, I would say, there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of substitute father thing as well going on because she was quite young when uh, when she was so it's like in in a way raptor is her third parent and as far as she knows uh, raptor as a father figure took over from maxis and at the same time from their parents p perspective it was a shared responsibility Oh, and in relation to that, we can write in capital letters, trust issues, lots of trust mm. issues. <laughs> so many trust issues. <laughs> uh, and yet another uh, somewhat parental figure is Eclipse. So it's like Eclipse trained her on the street. Uh, Eclipse trained her in the streets and sort of uh, acting as Hand of Trista Ooh, and, and, and Raptor trained her at Thrystar also acting as Hand of Trista although it, it, was, it was a team effort really Yes. And now she uh she has reasons to be uh not so trusting towards the whole team. So in a way she doesn't really have a place anywhere because 
because uh, for the longest time she didn't feel uh, she didn't feel at home at home then she found her new home in the streets and then she found her new home uh, among seekers but those were both undermined by learning the truth about uh, the uh, the whole uh, rescue plan so it's like now she can't even trust the streets Life is not easy for our jewel, man. <laughs> and it only gets worse. <laughs> I feel. At first she finds out all this is a lie, and then... Well, I suppose her reality isn't a lie, but when she gets to Murphy Station, there's going to be some more, like, real big issues there. Yeah, but on the other hand, I, I would think... Uh... uh having already been subjected to the oh we have been preparing you for a special thing and and we didn't tell you about it <laughs> actually actually makes it easier for her yeah. to accept the murphy reality it's like yeah we have been preparing all these people for a thing and we we haven't been able to uh tell anybody about it okay figures <laughs> So uh, this, so this, this would be like a a bit of a par paradoxical uh, bonus point for her. It's like because she already knows that nobody can be trusted, and and there are schemes and and uh, and uh, and plots everywhere. It's like so. Okay, another another scheme then. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I didn't really think about it that way. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, so this this gives me an idea that each of the three characters would have a widely different uh reaction and widely different take on the Murphy reveal. So for Jewel it's oh an another scheme. All right. Uh for scribe it would have to some. Uh, it would have to be something to do with the data. So it's like something that he has been analyzing in his mind and sort of uh, maybe almost sort of kind of uh, figured out, but not quite. Uh, but haven't quite been able to put his finger on it. And then when uh, when it's when it's revealed. Then he's like, oh, oh, that makes sense now. You got any thoughts for Nali or? Uh, as for Nali, I think for him it might be the most difficult because he's the one who feels most at ease in this world or in, in this particular reality. Mm -hmm. So I would think that for him it's like, whoa. On the other hand, the technological aspect of it might uh, might be alluring to him. So I d I don't know. With Nali, uh, I will leave it open for now. But yeah, mm -hmm. for Scribe, it is it is uh, it could be something that he has been. Uh, the data that has has been compiling at the back of his head now makes sense mm -hmm. and and it's it's a sort of re uh, reveal uh, relief I, I will write it down myself I've done it <coughs> it's the bottom of the document oh uh, okay I was yeah oh, oh, can, oh okay uh, that, okay <laughs> because we originally started talking about it as like each character mm -hmm. uh, I sort of lumped it all together but we can in fact let me take this yeah, move it in the beginning. 
so that's that one. And to uh, normally yeah, move it and then add to the end that uh, we are not 100% sure what his reaction might be. I feel like we've squeezed a lot out of this uh, story. <laughs> Indeed. Co coconut today. <laughs> it's like from oh uh, I don't really know <laughs> to oh and this is how they would react. <laughs> that, I think that... there was an element of fuck this technology in there somewhere as well. Yeah. <laughs> Some days. <laughs> fuck this technology is the right way to go. <laughs> <laughs> or I would say it, it was a good call we've got a bit of a better understanding of our characters now yeah if that was the goal we set out to achieve this morning which I think it was it then was goal achieved. it yeah. was uh, I am going to wrap up this recording now mm -hmm. stop recording <laughs>